Video game graphics, physics, machine learning. What connects them all? At their core, vectors are just ordered lists of numbers. But with them, we can describe positions, directions, and even complex data. In this video, I'll introduce the basics of vectors, so you can build the foundation you'll need for understanding topics like computer graphics and machine learning. Hi, I'm Oliver. I study computer science and have a strong interest in machine learning and AI. I want to make some of the core ideas in maths and computer science easier to follow. In this video, we'll look at vectors, a simple but powerful concept in linear algebra, and the first step toward understanding matrices and eventually neural networks. Here you can see some examples of vectors. You can see them as lines with an arrow, so a direction. So these are two things that identify a vector. First, they have a length. You see these vectors have different lengths. And second, they have a direction. So in this three-dimensional space, they point in different directions. Now, this is represented through numbers, an ordered list of numbers. You can see on the left-hand side the specific numbers that represent these vectors. For example, 3, 1, 4 for the blue vector. I will show you in two-dimensional space, an easier example. So in this case, let's look at the vector 4, 2. There's two ways of writing them commonly. One is in this column format, another in this row format, separated by commas. We're gonna use this column format for now, because it is also more common when working with matrices. So here we have our vector 4, 2, as before, and also a graph. So we have an x and a y coordinate. To draw in our vector 4, 2, we can just follow these coordinates based on the information we have here. So our first value, which we'll consider our x coordinate, is the 4. So in our x coordinate, this is this point here. And our 2 represents our y coordinate. In this case, it would be on the y axis. So the vector 4, 2 just gives us the instructions to reach the point that this vector is describing, go 4 in the x direction and 2 in the y direction. So it ends up at this point here. And this means that this vector is described by this line here. And now we'll also add this arrow as before to show which direction this is going. Commonly, for our vectors, we start at the origin and move from this. So our vector can now represent going at this angle this far, or it can also just represent this point we have here. Now using vectors, we can apply some operations. One operation is addition. So having two vectors, we can add them together to get another vector. The way we do the addition is we separately add the values for each of the entries. So for the first entry of both of these vectors, we determine the first entry of the output vector by adding them together. So for the first entry of our output vector, we add both of the first entries of our input vectors. So these two. So our output vector, the first value is one plus one. For our second value, we add the second value of both of the input vectors. So it would be two plus one. And this gives us the vector two, three. If we look at our graph again, we can sketch in these input vectors. So once we have 1, 2, and 1, 1. Now to get to our output vector, we just have to append these two vectors. So appending means that we first go along one vector, and then wherever we end up at, we do the same movement of the other vector. So before it was 1, 1, now we again do 1, 1, and we reach this point up here. So this blue vector represents our output vector. And you can see that the order at which we apply these vectors does not matter. So we can first go to this second vector and then apply the first one, which was 1, 2, and get to the same point as when we first apply this 1, 2 vector and then the 1, 1 vector. Another operation is scalar multiplication, which essentially scales the direction. So if we have the vector 2, 2, which brings us to this point here, 
And then our scaling would essentially be like a stretching. So stretching by two means increasing its length by two. So this would be one, and this would be two. So our output vector would be two, two. And this is also the case for computing this numerically. So in this case, we multiply each of these entries by the scalar and then store it in that location. So we would have two times two and two times two as the first and second entry of this vector, giving us the vector four, four, as we have in our example. And the same can be done for numbers smaller than one. So for example, scaling by one half means we divide both of these numbers by two and we get the vector one, one. And this vector one, one is exactly half the distance of this vector two, two. And with negative numbers, we would just first flip our vector and then scale it again. So if this number was, for example, negative one half, what we would do is first flip it. So we would draw the vector in the opposite direction and then apply the scaling. So again, half would mean we would reach this point here. And in the multiplication, we would then also get negative one for both entries. So what can we use vectors for? Well, vectors help us solve systems of equations. And one way to visualize them is, for example, to ask yourself, when we have the vector one, two, and three, one, how can we get to this point four, five? So the point four, five would be going four in the x direction and five in the y direction, giving us this point up here. And then when we sketch in both of these vectors, so one, two, and three, one, we now want to know how far do we have to go with this vector and how far with this vector to reach this point up here. You can see if we just use this vector by itself and we would scale it, we could reach some point up here along this line, but not this point here. So we would additionally need to use this vector here. And the way we would write this down would be to scale each of these vectors. So multiply by a number, let's say a, the first vector, add that to the second vector scaled with a number b, and then set that equal to our point. And then our question is, what values do a and b have to take so that we reach this point? Another way to write this down is in the matrix form. This form stores the same information as this one here, and it allows our computer to store this information in a more compact format and additionally apply algorithms to solve it efficiently. Using these vector representations and algorithms associated with them, we can describe points, lines, or polygons on screens in computer graphics to, for example, model what an environment looks like in a video game. And vectors also help us describe velocities, acceleration, and fields in physics. And a very relevant application of vectors in data science and AI is to store data points as high dimensionality vectors to represent a combination of information about a single entity. For example, storing information about height, age, gender, and so on about a single person. And then utilizing these vectors together with matrix multiplications to define computations and solve equations to find optimal outcomes. So for example, in the case where we've written this equation, we can apply matrix operations in order to solve for A and B efficiently. If you enjoyed this video, you might like my next one, which I'll do on matrices. It's the perfect follow-up to what we covered today. Or if you want to go back to the basics, check out my video on binary numbers, the foundation on how computers store and process data. Thanks for watching.